Welcome to video 149 in series 3, and now I'll continue writing the state pattern script. Okay, so I'll start by filling in the awake method. And uh, first of all, set up state references. So I'm just calling this method set initial references. And then I subscribe uh, to three events. So npc master dot event npc low health plus equal activate flee state. Uh, npc master dot event npc health recovered plus equal activate patrol state npc master dot event npc deduct health is plus equal activate struck state so pretty simple stuff in start i'll just have a, another set initial references and of course i need all the unsubscribes Okay, so I have there the three unsubscribes. Now I also have this here, a unity method, stop all coroutines. Since there's a coroutine in the script, and it could still be running when the um, NPC dies, I have this here just to stop any possibility of errors coming up because of uh, the coroutine still running in the background as this is being uh, disabled. So that just stops the coroutine. Okay, so inside of the update method, carry out update state, you'll see that in just a bit. I will not be uh, filling in the setup state references just yet, because that's where I actually initialize each of those, um, each of these. And uh, in order to do that, they need to have a constructor inside of them, but we haven't written that code just yet, so we'll come back to that. Inside of uh, set initial references, I'll just simply uh, have a reference to the nav mesh agent, as you can see, and also activate patrol state. So the very first state that the NPC should go into is patrolling. Okay, in a carry out update state. So it's pretty simple. If time dot time greater than next check, then next check is equal to time dot time plus check rate current state dot update state and you'll see that uh, that you know each of the behaviors has an update state method and in this way only one of those scripts is being called and its behaviors are running and all the others are just sitting quiet and so it's a lot more efficient that way and that's what we're doing right here all right so next is activate patrol state and inside of that just write current state is equal to patrol state at the moment it won't do anything we have to write the constructor and write up all those other scripts the details in them and then I initialize them in this script okay next activate flee state now this isn't going to make any sense at all until i explain it in just a bit uh, but just what i've written here is if current state is uh struck state then captured state is equal to flee state return and outside of that if block uh, i've written current state is equal to flee state okay so it will make no sense i'll explain in a moment all right so inside of activate struct state there's a uh, fair bit to put in okay so in activate struct state i've got first of all stop all coroutines so what is this for so if the uh, NPC is struck, then they will go into a struck state uh, and they'll remain in it for this duration, 1.5 seconds. And once they're recovered, then they return back to their normal state and etc. But what if the NPC is struck while they are in the struck state? So let's say they've done one second of the duration and then they're struck again. Well, I don't want them to recover i want the timer to reset so if we didn't reset stop the coroutine then even though they were hit again they'll just get up after half a second more so they'll get up too quickly uh, so for that reason i cancel this coroutine uh, if they are struck again and that's what's happening here now i'm saying here if current state is not equal to struck state then the captured state is equal to current state. Uh, you'll see that the captured state is going to be used by the coroutine. So once the enemy has been struck, they will enter the struck state. But what state were they in before they were struck? So that's what I capture here. And, um, and then, of course, at the end of their uh, recovery, when they recover, they will be returned back to the state they were in. And so that's why here in the activate flee state method, I said here, if the current state 
is the struct state, then just put the flee state. Just put this as the state to assign. So that way when they're struck, they'll return back to the flee state instead of uh, something else. Okay, so let's just go through this code. So as I was saying, if current state is not equal to struct state, uh, then the captured state is equal to current state. If range weapon is not equal to null, uh, then range weapon dot set active false. So if you had a proper gun holding animation uh, that has also included like a struck or a knockback animation with while holding the weapon, you don't need to do this. In this case, um, since there aren't any that are freely available, so I'm just doing a bit of a hacky job here, which is to just hide the weapon so it doesn't look really odd when the arranged enemy is struck, or rather arranged NPC is struck. Uh, then if my nav mesh agent dot enabled, then stop my nav mesh agent dot stop. So they will stop going to their destination. Current state is equal to struck state. So now we're just proceeding towards the end of this method and npc master dot call event npc struck anim. This will cause the npc animation to move into the struck animation. Start coroutine recover from struck state. Okay, so now let's uh, fill in the coroutine. So this is the recover from struck state coroutine, and after the yield statement, so after it's waited that duration, npc master dot call event npc recovered anim. So this will cause the animation uh, state, the controller, to return back to the normal animation, the idle. And if range weapon is not equal to null, we'll activate that range weapon again. If my nav mesh agent dot enabled, resume. So my nav mesh agent dot resume. And uh, finally, current state is equal to captured state. So that means return us back to whatever state we were in before we were struck, except the struck state. So if, if for example, they enter the struck state and then they're shot again, uh, then they're currently in the struck state. So that's why we ignore that uh, up above. So there you go. Okay, so let's keep going. So in on enemy attack, we have here, if pursue target is not equal to null, then if vector three dot distance transform dot position and the pursue target dot position is less than or equal to melee attack range, so they're within range, then vector three two other, uh, and so I'm just capturing here a value which I can then use to check whether they're in front. So vector three two other uh, is what I've called it is equal to pursue target dot position minus transform dot position. Then another if statement, if vector three dot dot brackets two other and transform dot forward, so comma transform dot forward is greater than 0.5f. So that I, what I'm here, I, what I'm checking here is that, um, is the pursue target in front of the NPC? So if the uh, pursue target is in front of the NPC, then they should be hurt. So that's all this is. So, you know, when the uh, attack animation, the melee attack animation on the golem is reaching near the e end, I had an event on it that looks for a method called on, on enemy attack. And so when this method is called, what we need to just check is that the player is still in fact in front of the uh, enemy and they're close enough to get hurt. And if they are, then we send these uh, messages. So the first one is pursue target dot send message. Uh, be very careful with the uh, spelling and case here. It has to match exactly. When we come to write those, it'll, that's what it will request. I mean, that's what it will require. So that's a uh, string here. Call event player health deduction, comma, melee attack damage, comma, send message options don't require receiver. Then another one, pursue target dot send message. This is a string process damage, comma, melee attack damage, comma, send message options don't require receiver. So the first one is for the player. Uh, that's just what the method is called in there, that it's a call event player health deduction. 
it gets past the uh, attack damage value, and then as the player, our health will be deducted accordingly. Now for the NPCs, they have uh, a different thing. They have a uh, take damage script, and on that, there's a method called process damage, and it takes in the uh, int value melee attack damage, and accordingly, it will deduct the health of the uh, attacked NPC. And uh, once we're done all that, set is melee attacking this boolean to false. And then next of all, uh, well, the next one is set my attacker. So simply set my attacker up above. It's a variable to equal the supplied attacker reference. Now in distract, just put in there location of interest is equal to distraction boss that is supplied. Uh, and then if current state is the patrol state, then set the current state to the alert state. So this will result in them having a new location of interest to check out. And if they were just patrolling, whatever that source of distraction, it will have turned them into a, the alert state. And you'll see when we write that script that the alert state will result in the NPC walking towards the location of interest. Okay, so it's a very big script, and I'll have to remind myself to uh, fill in uh, these uh, this portion of the script as we uh, uh, fill in the other behaviors. Otherwise, nothing happens. So, uh, so we'll get to that in well, I guess in the next video. So it was a long script. This one, there's a lot going on. Uh, it's not complicated. It's just that well, we've just got a lot of things to consider and work uh, work through. Okay, so with that done, um, uh, well, there won't be any actual change here. Uh, but with the NPC golem, uh, we can see all of this stuff. And uh, I guess uh, you can tick a few things. So, for example, just say, yes, it does have a melee attack. Uh, it won't have a follow target. Well, I don't need to set it one. Well, look, we can set stuff. We don't have to do it now. Or should we? I guess we can. Just add a new tag. So add a new tag. And this one is going to be player, add another tag, and call this one friendly. And so go back to the enemy golem, and uh, in the uh, enemy tag, set the size to 2, and just say player is one of them, and friendly is another, so that would be friendly AI. What would the friendly tags be? Well, it would be enemy, so we can set that. That's easy. So just put in there enemy. Okay, now the site layers. Just put everything first, and then unchecked, ignore raycast, and uncheck enemy. Uh, so that way it won't see that. Uh, actually, I should add a another layer here. So I'll add a layer called friendly. Okay, so going back. Good. So it'll see everything except other enemies, and uh, of course it won't uh, see anything it should ignore. And my enemy layers will be player and friendly. Uh, and then for this one, the friendly layer is enemy for this character. And of course always hit apply to save the changes to the prefab. And we'll continue uh, filling in this. There's more to do uh, later on. Anyway, so that's it for this video. We're going to start now writing each of those behavior scripts. So move on to the next video.